The jungle in League of Legends, both the physical area on Summoner's Rift and the role itself is the game's ever-changing feature, because in nearly every season of play, something about it has been altered or reworked. The mid lane meta has obviously been adjusted over the last four to five years, but generally speaking, you might be able to get away with following a 2015 Orianna guide, and an okay portion of that information would still hold up. It's not going to be perfect by any means, but you could learn something new if you were brand new to Orianna and mid lane. The way that you can last hit minions under tower is still exactly the same. You can build Deathcap if you're snowballing, or if they have a lot of MR, you can build Void Staff, and you should look to go Seeker's Arm Guard and Barrier, Heal, or Exhaust versus AD Assassins. But if you look at a jungle guide from the same time period, it would be next to useless. The way that you path throughout the jungle, how and when to use Smite, how much gold and EXP you get from the camps and the Scuttle Crab, jungle items, respawn timers, the Dragon and Rift Herald, all of these things have been changed over the last five years, and that's not even talking about the fact that smiting each camp used to do something different. In the midst of all of the things about jungling that change, if you were to pick one staple, one thing that defines the jungle role in every season and mostly stays the same, it would be the champions. Lee Sin is still an early game ganker. Sejuani and Zac are still tanky, hard crowd controlled junglers that we see commonly in professional play, and Nidalee and Kha'Zix are the perfect smurf carry champions to 1v9 your solo queue games. These consistently strong jungle champions are usually seen across a wide variety of ranks and skill levels, and in some seasons, champions like Rengar can be a top tier carry jungler, both for solo queue and be strong in competitive play at the same time. However, there seems to be a class of junglers that you rarely see dominating in high elo solo queue, ones that you'll never find the pro players practicing for worlds, and they're arguably one of the weakest classes of champions in all of League of Legends, the power farming melee carries. The question is why? Certainly, Master Yi can seem very strong at times, almost borderline unfair. Udyr does have good early game impact, right? On top of that, power farming isn't even unique to the jungle. In fact, this entire concept has a place in this game, 80 carries. The meta has developed a role so dedicated to farming gold and getting items that for the better part of nine years, it's been the best possible strategy to nominate one player on your team to strictly support them and help them become a strong DPS. So what's wrong with this type of jungler? Why are they rarely seen at the highest ranks? What is so bad about you choosing to farm the jungle and get gold that way, while the enemy Sejuani is constantly ganking your laners? Well actually, from early 2014 till about the end of 2015, Udyr, Shivana, Master Yi, and the melee power farming carry were some of the best junglers in the game. And it was all thanks to one thing, Feral Flare. Our story begins nearly 10 years ago, July 13th, 2010. League of Legends has always had a jungle. Red buff, blue buff, and all of the other camps in the alpha stages were there, but the idea of having one player on your team be a jungler and not assign them to one of the three lanes wasn't always thought of as the best strategy. The jungle back then was way less of a defined and formal role, something that you'll see every single game. In the very early days, laners would just clear the jungle camps in the mid to late game once they were stronger to get additional experience in gold and of course the buffs. Take a look at this. This footage was actually recorded recently on the alpha servers of the Chrono Shift project. If you're interested in the older versions of League of Legends yourself, you should definitely go check out their website in the description down below and check out their discord. Look, in modern day League of Legends, we have the Hunter's Machete and the Hunter's Talisman. When your teammates leash for you, they don't take your experience just by being close to the camp because only the killing blow gets XP. And leash ranges and leash mechanics have been perfected over 10 years to make this a seamless and simple part of the early game. It's probably not even something you have to think too much about. But if we go back to 2010, Leashing and jungling was a whole process. It was a whole dilemma that you had to deal with. Look how hard the Rise has to leash for Shaco and how bad the clear is. 
Shaco basically has to use all of his mana, and if you see the way that blue buff constantly resets aggro and the leash range, this was pretty normal and this happened all the time. There was a different game where I tried to do it completely leashless, and it was genuinely impossible. It wasn't just hard, I simply could not kill the jungle on my own or kill a single camp by myself. Not to mention, just by Ryze even being in the vicinity of the camps, dying also causes him to take XP from the kill. There was no Hunter's Machete. The wolf camp could critically strike you, and Smite did not heal you or even do true damage. The jungle would wreck you so hard that the chance of you even thinking about some kind of crazy playstyle where you could be a hard carry or a hard farmer was laughable at best. There's no way that that would work. But sometimes in life, people like a challenge, and as crazy as it sounds, there were players that loved jungling, not despite its difficulty, but because of it. The challenge of jungling was more interesting and unique than simply duo laning and sharing CS. Riot finally gave the junglers a way to fight back, assuming they could actually get the gold to buy the item of course, which was the release of Riggle's Lantern. The lasting impact of Riggles on the jungle would be felt for the next four years. All of the base stats helped clearing the jungle substantially, but it was the passive that made the biggest difference. The pseudo crit that the item gave you would help you clear for the entire game, so the main role of a jungler would be to get this item as fast as possible. Needless to say, this was a substantial improvement for junglers, and more and more people could learn how to jungle this way, but you still didn't see them every game. It was still so difficult to clear the jungle early on, and even the roster of champions capable of clearing the jungle was also pretty small. Champions like Fiddlesticks, Maokai, and Warwick had a much easier time sustaining themselves through the jungle, but at the end of the day it also came down to strategy. When he was casting the World Cyber Games of 2010, Freak notes during the finals of CLG vs SK Gaming that both teams will be using a jungler this game. Which sounds insane and silly to say in 2020, but 10 years ago, it was a legitimate debate whether or not it was better to use a 2-1-2 lane assignment with 2 top, 1 mid, and 2 bot, or a 1-1-1-2 with 1 top, 1 jungler, 1 mid, and 2 bottom lane. Fast forward one year later to the Season 1 World Championship, in every game there was a jungler, so sometime between late 2010 and late 2011, the jungle role was solidified into the League of Legends meta as the best strategy, and Riggle's Lantern was a huge part of jungling history because of it. In November of 2013, Riggles and Madrid's Razors, which were the item that built into Riggles, would go through a mini rework along with the rest of the jungle and support items. Earlier that year on patch 3.8, the random chance to do the big massive hit to monsters was removed in favor of a small damage buff on every hit. The consistency of the damage was nice, and being able to get that damage on all of your hits was a lot better because everybody loves less RNG. On 3.14, the rework was given a new passive for the hard farmers. 40% increased gold from monsters was not only helpful, but the item also offered some utility. The item coming with a mini sidestone effect allowed you to get even more use out of an item that most players would describe as a greedy one. The duration on the ward was doubled from 90 seconds to 180 seconds. It might have sounded like I did my best to sell you on the item being really good, and for the select few champions that liked it, it definitely wasn't bad, but almost nobody was building Riggles during this time, and the major reason for that is that the other jungle items were just way stronger, and the meta junglers at the time like Rengar, Lee Sin, and Kha'Zix, the item made no sense for them. Veteran junglers will remember the Spirit Stone items being king back then, and Spirit of the Elder Lizard was on top of them all. You weren't even necessarily missing out on extra gold either, because the Spirit Stone items, just like Riggles, also gave some additional gold. On top of that, these items restored your health and your mana, whereas Riggles only healed you. In order to keep up with the power of the other Spirit Stone jungle items, on patch 4.5, Riot decided to do something crazy with Riggles' Lantern. If you want to know how to make power farming junglers OP, you simply introduce them to Feral Flare. Riggle's Lantern would be automatically upgraded into a Feral Flare upon reaching 25 Feral Stacks, which you gained by killing large monsters while jungling. To make things easier for you, this stacking number began with your Hunter's Machete at the very beginning of the game. This means that you immediately started stacking on your first jungle clear, and then you would be able to visibly see how many stacks you had after you bought Madrids. 
Once you completed Feral Flare, the item became stronger in every single way. Firstly, it retained the gold passive, meaning you were still able to scale into buying your other items much quicker, and the warding active also increased its range, so it had utility on top of the damage. Oh, and the Feral Flare also continued to stack by the way, and you could stack it on champion kills and assists, not just jungle camps now. These Feral Stacks increased the damage that you did on your auto attacks, as well as how much your autos healed you. The item had infinitely stacking healing, infinitely stacking damage, increased gold from jungle monsters, which also had utility with the wards, and the stacking effect would be upgraded to let you stack on champions, and it had base stats of 15 AD and 35% attack speed, all for only 1800 gold when you originally bought the Riggles Lantern. That's pretty powerful. Master Yi, Udyr, Zinzao, Shivana, Nocturne, and many others began their reign of terror on Summoner's Rift. The infinite stacking capability meant that even if they got kills, when they were on full items by the way, they would still become stronger and have more sustain. During this time, it also became kind of meta to take teleport and smite, because your TP allowed you to farm that much faster, and not waste time walking back from base, or walking to the other side of the jungle, that would just be too inefficient. Trick2G, the already popular streamer at the time, and still today as one of the biggest names in League of Legends, would show the community the power of Udyr and other Feral Flare junglers. The community immediately hit up the forums and Reddit to complain about just how broken Patch 4.5 Feral Flare was. Jeremy Gaming Curios placed it in his top 10 all-time overpowered items, and sometimes solo laners would take Smite and go top or mid on something like a Fiora or Aurelia and grab their own Feral Flare. The entire jungle meta became about ignoring your teammates and farming all game. Ranked in solo queue is already a terrible environment, but it became even more hostile when arguments over the fact that your jungler seems to never gank because he's too busy stacking Feral Flare Shen for some reason, while the enemy jungler is a god and helped all the lanes win the game, doesn't make it very fun. It was like some kind of addiction, an obsession. If you were the jungler and you thought for a second about doing anything but stacking, why even play jungle at all? And it wasn't just the melee carries either, certainly Master Yi, Udyr, Shivana, and Xin Zhao benefited heavily from the item, but people were playing tank junglers, AP junglers, trolling jungle just to build Feral Flare, it was a huge craze. On the very next patch, just two weeks later, the Feral Flare requirement for the upgrade was increased from 25 to 30 monsters, and then again, another two weeks later, it received an even bigger nerf. Almost every part of the item was hit, and the infinite sustain was completely removed. After dominating ranked, the question would then become how long till we see Feral Flare pop up in competitive play? How long till Master Yi 1v5s at Worlds? Never, because Master Yi was not picked a single time in Season 4 professional play. Udyr was picked once by Diamond Prox, but he didn't even build Feral Flare. And Shivana was picked a bunch of times, but remember, Shivana used to be a top laner. There were no games of Feral Flare Shivana Jungle recorded in Season 4. Instead, other junglers would be seen using it sparingly, most notably Nocturne, who won 7 games and lost 6 when going for the item. Xin Zhao was the other most played Riggles and Feral Flare jungler, but he was not very successful. 14 games I could find of Feral Flare Xin Zhao, and he lost 10 of them. Ultimately, the item suffered from the same thing that a lot of solo queue strategies fall victim to at the competitive level. Usually, solo queues disorganized and low-level gameplay leads to the community overrating a strategy, a champion, or an item, even when its weaknesses are very clear. And I don't uh, ignore the idea that 
champions can snowball out of control with it. I just think it's overrated in the way that people just kind of oversell the, the thing. They're like, they give it too much credit than what it actually deserves. And LCS has been the latest example as to why so the, there's a difference between solo queue and competitive. In competitive, uh, Feral Flare isn't making a much big impact. It's like players aren't investing in it, players are not gonna, you know, non-stop farm because they actually have to contribute, they're getting pushed out and flushed out of the jungle. And that, honestly, that's how you're supposed to beat Feral Flare. You're not always gonna be allowed to farm. If anyone, if the enemy team allows you to get a very fast Feral Flare, then either they've crushed your lanes or they've just been sitting around jacking up. So, you're kind of just winning because the enemy team is being lazy or dumb. The lifespan of this item was very short-lived. It didn't even last an entire year, because come late 2014 for pre-season 5, the new jungle brought a new stacking jungler item, Devourer. This new jungle item gave you 50% attack speed in a brand new passive. Basic attacks dealt 40 plus your devourer stacks bonus magic damage, and then scoring a champion kill or assist will grant 2 devourer stacks, and killing a large monster will grant 1. If there's one champion that comes to your mind when you think about this time period, it absolutely has to be Warwick. Patch 4.20 Warwick had one of the all-time highest win rates in ban rates, at approximately a 58% win rate and a 60% ban rate. He was so overpowered because of the new Devourer and Red Smite combo. The way that his old kit worked was mostly on hit, so all you had to do was press R and smite, and most of the time that would kill them 100 to 0. If it didn't, you simply pressed your other point and click ability which was Q and then maybe had to do one or two auto attacks and they'll definitely be dead for sure. Keep in mind all of these things healed you. Despite his insane win rate, he wasn't one of the strongest champions of all time though because his win rate reached the extreme heights that it did simply because he was like the easiest champion in the game to play. After both Warwick and the item were nerfed, Warrior and Cinderhulk junglers would become far superior, and again, just with Feral Flare, it was a toxic and unfulfilling playstyle that did not have any relevance in competitive play. Infinitely stacking on the original Devourer was also interesting because there was no hard set goal. You just stacked this item as much as you could. But one thing that junglers loved about the Feral Flare is that there was a clear set goal in mind. They wanted to go for the upgrade. So on patch 5.13, Riot thought that they had the solution, and on paper, this patch was really smart. Uh, all right, here's the big uh, here's the big change to the patch: the devour. So, starting on hit magic damage is now 30 instead of 25, and then now large monsters give one stack per takedown, and you also get one stack per killer assist, and then epic monsters, which is Baron or Dragon, get five stacks per takedown. Like what happened before a feral player is like people get the feral player and they're like, wow, if I just get my 30 stacks, I'll like go off and carry the game. And they just sit in the jungle and farm and like not help their team at all and then just like come out and be annoying and like hope that the team didn't die too much while they're stacking their feral player. I think this is a good route that they're going towards with the devourer and I think it's like the right choice. After reaching 30 stacks, your devourer would become sated, applying on hit effects twice every other auto attack. The item would give you 5 stacks from Dragon and Baron, which meant that these junglers had some incentive to do these objectives. Stacking from kills and assists right away was also more intriguing to gank, and also now you only had to get the assist on the large monsters, which meant that if you gave away your blue buff to your mid laner and handed it over, you did not sacrifice a stack. This seems like the perfect way to balance the item. The stacking isn't infinite, unlike Feral Flare, and it actually gave you some incentive to be active on the map. So how exactly did this impact the jungle meta? Well, let's talk about Shivana. This is the ban rate history for Shivana. When the new jungle item came out during preseason in late 2014, she was banned an okay amount, but with no sated, she wasn't necessarily overpowered. After that, it went quiet for a while, and then overnight she reached her highest ban rate ever. The biggest reason she was just a cut above the rest was because she farmed the jungle the fastest of any of these attack speed junglers, and when the dragon gave you 5 stacks, she of course melts it. All that Shivana had to do was farm up till 6, which she loves to do anyway, grab blue smite to help out her ganking, and then keep power farming and ganking simultaneously, and shoot for a 12 to 16 minute sated. As soon as the upgrade came through, she went full god mode. There was no way that your typical Lee Sin or Jarvan or Rek'Sai could survive as Shivana invade 1v1. Her sated damage was just far too high. 
I assume that Riot must have tested her internally and knew how strong she was with the item because they preemptively nerfed her on the same patch the day that the item came out. If you remember that really weird period where Hai was the jungler for Cloud9 and he came in to run the gauntlet with them and somehow help them make worlds, he played some Sated Devourer Shyvana jungle in LCS and he was quite successful with it. It always amazed me how even in a professional game how much more farm he was able to get over the enemy jungler. She was just crazy strong during that time. After a few patches, Sated Devourer was nerfed, and then next season, in 2016, it was completely removed from the game and replaced with Bloodraiser, which is now the non-stacking and more basic attack speed jungle item that we still have today. The on-hit effect that you got from being sated was moved to the Rageblade passive instead. Both of these things, Bloodraiser and Rageblade, are similar enough today to the way that they were back in 2016, which is why the story kind of ends here. There are no more stacking jungle items. From the original Riggle's Lantern to Feral Flare and Sated Devourer, the power farming jungler has never really been the same since those days. The gameplay cracks and problems that these power farming junglers have in League of Legends began to show almost immediately after the original Feral Flare came out nearly six years ago. If you remove the nostalgia goggles and research how players actually felt during that time, it's a bit easier to see why they've had such a hard time buffing them. When your Master Yi is doing nothing but farming up to get his Feral Flare or Sated Devourer stacks, the enemy jungler is spam ganking you. Yi doesn't care, so he keeps farming. The enemy jungler is running all over the game, but Yi still does not care, so he keeps farming. It feels like the enemy team is one last push, one last objective away from victory. But after you flamed your master Yi the entire game, he finally completes his item. He comes out of the jungle, he sees the light for the first time, and he's surprised that, hey, there was a League of Legends game going on the entire time he was farming, and now he decides it's time to kill everybody. He 1v5s the enemy team, and everyone in the lobby is left with just one question. What was the point of playing that game? When the enemy team at least feels like they did everything right by invading, ganking, and setting all the lanes behind, tilting your team, and forcing all of you to bombard your jungler with hate, only for none of it to be relevant because it was only a matter of time regardless that he would complete his stacks, it's a linear and toxic playstyle. Years later, the funnel strategy would prove to us how rare it is for these champions to exist in a healthy state because the one time they were genuinely strong in professional play as a power farming jungler, it was only through this funneling game plan, which has a whole host of other problems that deserves an entirely separate video on its own. Just take a look at jungle Shivana these days. AD and on hit power farming Shivana has been completely phased out of the meta in 2020, and it's largely because the AP build has a less linear and more dynamic playstyle. She becomes a ranged and poke champion. The only way that AD Shivana can function is to be so far ahead of the enemy jungler that she can stand in a 1v5 and do enough damage to just fight her way out of it. So, why would you bank on being several levels above your opponents and being more than a full? item ahead of them in terms of gold, when you can just be more consistently effective all of the time. Oftentimes, solo queue is described by the player base as a game of luck and simply punishing mistakes, so it doesn't matter if you outlane your opponent if the Lee Sin decides to gank you while Master Yi is stuck farming his jungle. This is especially evident in 2020 because of how important drakes are in Season 10. Not only is it tilting to get permaganked, but it also means that you have to wait for the 35 minute Master Yi win condition, which is never a guarantee in the FF15 culture that we have. Power farming, melee junglers are one of the hardest classes to balance in League of Legends, but just as with any champion class in this game, they did have their time in the sun. There was one period in time where they shined above the rest. Whether another jungle stacking item will be put into the game ever again, I'm not sure about that. I just hope Riot can find a way to make it fun for the Udyr mains to play, and also fun to play against him. But I don't even know if that's possible without a rework. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. I put a lot of effort into these videos, and I hope that it shows. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.